guys, this is Romy here. Welcome back to our life, Baxter DLC. We are going to choose a medium bow. Because we're, we're, we're not going to like struggle ourselves. Not too heavy, not too light. You picked up one of the mid-weight balls that was just right. It was a dark ebony black. Seeing your choice, Baxter nodded approval. Very well. That is a solid option. The best of both worlds, right? Easy to hold, yet with sufficient weight with it. Uh, sufficient weight to give it some momentum. I think I will follow your lead. I mean, why would you struggle with a heavier ball? I don't get it. <laughs> Baxter picked out an identical ball, flashing your rice smile. It's even the right color. Now, care to take the first shot? Sure, I can go first. How about you start? I'd rather not go first if that's okay. If that's what you want, do it. You can even now shake your head. Um, uh, how about you? All right. All right, then let's see how this goes, shall we? He turned the ball over in his hands a few times as though it was an alien object. You eventually figured out he was searching for the holes to put his fingers through. It was more than obvious that he'd never so much as touched a bowling ball before. After more fumbling, he managed to work out the grip. Wish me luck. Now, oh, he's so cute. <laughs> Now one for hesitation, Baxter took a couple large strides and sent the ball rolling. It hurtled down the lane straight on at first. Oh dear. You watch as the ball curved massively to one side. It reached the end of the lane barely. It clipped the very back corner pin, which fell over right as the ball dropped into the gutter. One point for Baxter. He turned to Yugen Grimace playfully. Can you tell this is new to me? It's okay. Thank you. I get another attempt this turn, correct? I'm still a little unfamiliar with the rules. That's right, two tries per frame, unless you knock them all down in one go. That's called a strike. I see. Well, here's hoping I can do a touch better than that. Baxter retrieved his ball and rolled his shoulders, taking form in front of the lane. His brow was furrowed in concentration. He wasn't as hasty as before. It took his time to line up the next shot. One step, two steps, a third step, and release. It shot off like a cannonball, barreling ahead. It still curved slightly at the last moment to knock one of the center bright pins head on. Five more points. Baxter nodded to himself, satisfied at the improvement. Not bad. 60% success is plenty for a first attempt. It's all part of the learning process. I must say I'm enjoying myself so far. Your turn, Michiko. You eyed the pins at the far end of the lane, gauging the distance. A breath in, a breath out. You raised the ball behind you, took a few steps forwards, then swung. It would be nice if we got a strike. Nice, you knocked a fair number of pins down. Well, at least you hit something. Um... It's been a while since I've been bowling, unless you want to count the the sports <laughs> Nintendo sports game. Let's let's do a strike. We want to impress him. The pins flew in all directions with that satisfying clatter. You're pretty good at this game, all told. It should be a piece of cake. Baxter plod enthusiastically, his brows raised in admiration. You are incredible. Thanks. <laughs> Very well done, an impressive first move. Your hit has struck Baxter as well, though after that initial amazement, he pulled a comically pained expression, grimacing with all his teeth. I suppose I better prepare myself for a total victory on your part. Hadn't you considered going easy on me? Listen, it was just a, a, a first try luck. He was kidding, but the appreciative comments still made you feel a little bashful. You scuffed your rental shoes against the wood floor. It's not that impressive, really. And your turn was over. You took a seat on the full leather, leather just as Baxter limbered up for his second frame. As the game proceeded, you and Baxter settled into a rhythm. You exchanged friendly chatter between frames and the odd quip or moment of celebration thrown in. It was a comfortable way to pass the afternoon. In an idle moment, you found yourself wondering more about Baxter again. The two of you will be there for a while yet, and if you felt inclined, it wouldn't be too hard to strike up a more in-depth conversation. Wait, that was a pun. Uh, so what- uh, okay, 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 okay. We only have two questions left, technically. So what's up with the black and white thing? He looked down his outfit and shrugged. Mm -hmm. I don't think of it as being much of a thing. Black and white happen to be my favorite colors. But isn't it having it be your entire wardrobe a bit much and dyeing your hair to match too? Baxter quietly observed your words with a wry smile. Clearly more amused than embarrassed for all that he had just for all that he just downplayed, it totally owned this strange quirk of his character. All right. I admit it. One could say I'd r I'm rather dedicated to the aesthetic as a whole. I came to it gradually, though I've had some level of affection for black and white ever since I was a small child. Anyone who knew me back then could have told you as much. I was very forthright and outspoken about my preferences, as children can often be. But it wasn't until a few years ago that I made the conscious decision to align my fashion choices with that underlying attachment. 
It was around then that I came to understand how clothing could be, on, be an expression of your personality, a way of showing yourself to the world. I wanted to make a statement, you could say. So I started experimenting with more grayscale looks and began selectively tailoring my wardrobe around the limited palette. To start with, like most people, I had associated black and white with more formal tastes and styles, tuxedos, dinner suits, tailcoats, and the like. But as I looked further beyond my, so my own social group, I found a diverse range of alternative soap cultures, which drew upon the monochrome theme. There was a lot of appeal for me there as well. I ended up adapting many of them into my own personal sense of taste. So? The rest, as I say, is history. That actually made a lot of sense, now that it was all laid out in front of you. It was like the, that one small choice early on had snowballed, gathered momentum as time went on, and now it formed a core part of who he was. But if that were the case, then the question was, questions remained. So what made you like black and white in the first place? As a kid, I mean. Oh, that. He leaned in closer and playfully threaded his fingers together under his chin. Can you guess? What? It wasn't like him to beat around the bush. The fact that he was choosing to toy with you with a with a toy with you a little about this was not what you prepared for. Those are standard form of colors. You must really love zebras. Are you maybe a fan of black and white movies? You're too much of a grown-up for colorful things. I feel like it's that one. You really think so? I don't know, you grew up with parents. And grown-ups is all you really had, right? He gave a cautious nod. Baxter definitely had, did have an aura of maturity about him, whether artificial or a natural part of his personality. Because he's only like a year older than us. So I thought he was at least two. Well, I suppose I can't deny that I put on an air of sophistication at times. It's a relic of my upbringing, no doubt. But that's not the reason I like black and white. See? I'll try and make it easy for you. The crew? The crux? The cr crew? Whatever, but the matter is this. Why do I, Baxter Ward, like the colors black and white so much? His voice took on a strange quality, placing a lot of emphasis on certain words. He was obviously trying to guide your thought process here, but you couldn't quite work it out. I don't fucking know. His hints are terrible. His hints are exactly the hints Tyler would give me. He'll be like, come on, it's right there. I'm basically giving you the answer. No, you're not, because I cannot think. <laughs> Negative one intelligence over here. Um. Tell me, tell me. <laughs> All right, I've had my fun. It was a difficult riddle, I admit. And to give you credit, I haven't given you every piece of the puzzle. Perhaps it would shed some light on the situation if I told you that my <laughs> that my name, my full name, is Bax is Baxter Alexander Ward. Baxter Alexander Ward, black and white. Oh, B A W. Wait, hey, wait a second. It's because of your initials. He grinned from ear to ear. The punchline finally revealed a face of sheer delight. You sound his name is so like regal. You got it. Brilliant, isn't it? He's <laughs> here. Right, oh, well, unless you, well, never mind. I was like, unless you get married, but he doesn't. He he could keep his last name unless he decides to take the. The, the person he's marrying their last name instead. He rested his chin in his hands and beamed at you. The very picture of smugness. You'd hardly seen him discontented in all the time you've known him. That's such a perfect coincidence. I can't believe that's the reason. But why would that cause such a lifelong obsession? That's, that's adorable. It's actually really adorable and very like coincidence. Or did he just... I don't know. I don't know. Back to just giggled boyishly, your responses swept his fingers idly through his bangs. I confess, as a child, I came to believe that black and white had to be a part of my identity as soon as I realized how well it coincided with my own name. It felt almost like magic in a way. Names carry power and importance. Kids love those kind of coincidences. It's part of the mystery of youth. Magic, huh? You reminded us of something that happened earlier. Is that why you reacted when I mentioned the amazing Alexander? Because it's your middle name. Okay. Well spotted, that's correct again. You could say I wish to be an amazing Alexander in my own right. I've always been fond of my full name. Like a two, 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 T, thank you for sharing with me. It's a very, no. Wh which one? These are all good. I like it too. So delighted that we're in accord. At any rate, I'm sure you can understand at least why I'm so attached to it and to my favorite colors. You certainly did. Who knew that such a simple question would lead to such a strange and unexpected answer? In the past few minutes, you ended up learning much more than you bargained for about the hidden depths of Baxter Alexander Ward. It's like when you're learning about your friend's IGN. Like, oh, how'd you come up with that? <laughs> 
In what felt like no time at all, you arrived at the final frame of the match. You glanced up at the scoreboard. You were ahead by a wide margin and had been since the game started. Your rounds had pretty much dropped in strikes and spares. Baxter, meanwhile, contented himself with avoiding the gutter, though he didn't even manage that every turn. Still, the big gap in score didn't dampen his fun. You finished your final frame with three consecutive strikes. Baxter whistled through his teeth. Some people in nearby lanes even applauded politely at the spectacle. Baxter took a far different approach to his last chance. <laughs> He had nothing to lose after all. The game had been lost, been lost, lo been long lost already. So he attempted bowling with his back turned. The ball made it onto the lane, rolling straight and true, and right down the drain it went. Baxter merely laughed. I finished as I began in the gutter. <laughs> then Baxter came over and offered you his hand to shake. The very model of sporting behavior. He took it. He fought hard up till the end. Yeah. Baxter grasped your hand firmly, and the two of you shook. He grinned. Thanks. Thank you for the game, Chico. I had a lot of fun. I tried my best, but you got the better of me in the end. Congratulations. You did great for your first try. Uh, yeah, just smile, you know. It really seemed as though he was happy to have played at all. Never mind that he didn't win. The joy of a new experience was what mattered to Baxter in the end. The game reaching its conclusion, you wander over the main counter to return your rental shoes. Your sightseeing bowling adventure was finished. Can we please ask that last question no, bro? <laughs> As he left the building, Baxter was quiet. He must have had something on his mind. He lifted his face to the twilt sky, then met your eyes. Well, we've had our fun, and the day is getting short on time. I suppose we could return to the neighborhood now. That was a question, not a statement. Baxter touched his chin in contemplation. He hadn't struck you as altogether thrilled by the idea, and coincidentally said that exact thing out loud. To be honest... To tell the truth, I'd be disappointed to go home. Would it be asking too much for this to last a little while longer? I'm not sure about you, but after the thrill of our bowling match, I've become rather hungry. Could I treat you to dinner? Or at least we could attend a meal together. You're so cute! Now that Baxter had mentioned it, you realize your stomach is totally empty. You've been out and about for hours. Yeah, I could eat. The prospect of having more opportunity to hang out lightened Baxter's already chipper mood. That's excellent. Oh, he's so cute. Is your love language like quality time or something? <laughs> he furrowed his brow and thought, tapping a forefinger to his cheek. Now where to go? I know that there was a food there was food of a sort at the bowling alley itself, but I can't say that would be my preference. I'd hope to bring you somewhere nice. Ideally a place you know. A place you know already that you like. We've had a enough new experiences for one day, I believe. Yo, this lighting just looks so good on him. <laughs> hmm. I'm not certain there's anywhere around here that could fit the bill. He lapsed into the thoughtful silence, at a loss for the best course of action. He was in need of suggestions. That was possible. Surely there was somewhere near Sunset Bird that would work. He discounted the two main restaurants in the town that your family normally ate at. Axe had already ruled out the bowling alley. Something fancier was acquired for a man like him. Fancy. Wait, that reminded you of something. Lazy afternoon sitting with your moms at a paved stone patio, watching your sister play golf over sprawling green hills. Oh my god, can you please can they can, can they mention how uh this would have been way cuter if I fucking met him before. So then they were like, oh my god, you're there too? I remember you, but I didn't do it. Damn it. Cause you guys said I had to like go by myself, and that's how we saw Baxter, but damn. Of course, you didn't know why you hadn't thought of it before. How about the Cypress? Cyprus. My parents are members of this country club not too far from here. They have a restaurant. I think it'd be perfect for you. Baxter looked blankly at you for a few seconds, blinking slowly. Then he opened his mouth in an abrupt interjection. What? Wait, this this could this could still be cute because it could have been like um, uh, I don't know the term, but you know, fate. <laughs> Wait a moment, you mean to say that your family has a membership for this, this c Cyprus? Is it Cyprus or Cyprus? I don't know. The, pre the country club. You nodded, that was what you just said. He barked a sudden laugh. That's incredible, so do I, or rather my parents do. It's where it took a few seconds to register and then it hit you. Baxter had a membership. He wasn't even from California. Your surprise must have been evident from the expression on your face because Baxter quickly continued with his explanation. There are a number of branches of the same club in some of the neighboring states. Once Cyprus, 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 I'm gonna say Cyprus if it's Cyprus, my bad. Or if it's neither, even more my bad. It's only a couple of hours from where I grew up. The local dance circuit back home frequently used as a venue for their events. California is their home, is home state. However, it's still quite a coincidence our parents have that membership in common. Yeah, it is. Hmm. Perfect. But with that connection between us made, I must agree that it would be the ideal place to dine for the evening. Great. 
You agree with your own idea even more. The serendipity of the moment hard to believe. You're getting used to that kind of thing with Baxter. I mean, this is fate. Strange look at happy coincidences. Seem to follow him around more than most people. Having settled on a place to eat, Baxter led you to his car. With a spring in his step, the prospect of a jaunt to the Cypress Cypress <laughs> obviously delighted him. You sped towards the general direction of Sunset Burn in the midst of a namesake of period of day. The faint wisp of clouds overhead were painted were painted a pale orange. It's so pretty here. It's so pretty. When you pulled up to the country club, the sun was hanging behind the trees which lined the golf courses. Ah, uh, it would have been so cute if I did meet him younger, and then they probably had a whole dialogue about it. But this is where we're going to stop for today's episode. Hope you guys are enjoying Baxter's route so far, because I definitely am. But thank you guys for watching today's episode. Stay beautiful, and I'll see you guys in the next one.